You know, there's one thing that we hadn't heard in over a month. Good morning! Good morning! Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back to church. Amen. Before we normally lead, lead off, before I normally lead off with a song, there's a few things that you normally hear me say. I'd say let's sing it loud and proud, make a joyful noise, or let's praise God. This week I did some research. I googled music in the Bible. Because that's how we can also praise God. Not one time did it say in there that we need to have a voice like Paul. You don't have to. It's not a prerequisite. You can have one like me. Here's just a few of the verses that I wrote down. And there's dozens and dozens and dozens of scripture about music. Sing to God, sing praises to His name. Okay, that was one. And another one is, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Another one will, I will sing to the Lord, praise to my God, while I have my being. So let's sing and praise God. You don't have to sing perfect like Paula or as bad as me if you don't want to. But let's all stand and join us in victory in Jesus. Just something that we need to do every week. 
it can become a habit to us. But when you miss it for a month, you realize how precious precious worship is. But we're here on holy ground this morning, and we need to take this worship service seriously. That God's allowed us to come back together once again. So let's try this morning to block out the outside world and focus on our Lord and Savior. For the next few weeks, we will have uh, just our 1030 worship service only. We will be bringing Sunday school back, uh, possibly the first of next month. We'll see how things go. And also, we'll be bringing back our uh, Wednesday night Bible studies, possibly next week, next month. But in the meantime, there's an online Wednesday night Bible study that you can tap into. And I think uh, Brother Eric has had the last two uh, Wednesday nights. Am I correct about that, Eric? The last one in the upcoming. And the last one in the upcoming. So y'all, y'all tune into YouTube and listen to Eric preach. He's real good. Amen. Um, Eric and I have been going to these classes to become a certified lay minister. We've been to two of them so far, and I think we got what about four or five more to go. So we've been traveling to Savannah every other Saturday. Y'all pray for us. It's real exciting. There's a lot of information to pack in such a short time. So in the meantime, uh, just remember we're only having a uh, 10.30 worship service. The choir will practice Saturday the 20th uh, from at 2 p.m. for one hour. So if you're part of the choir, uh, come to that. We will have our uh, church council meeting Tuesday. It's coming up Tuesday at 6, 6 o'clock. We're not having any financial meetings Ahead of time, Steve, just church council. Is all you know? Okay. All right. Just church council on Wednesday night. Tuesday night, I'm sorry. The Methodist women, I guess they plan on meeting on the third Sunday at 11.30. Am I correct about that? Any of you women? We will have um, coffee in the morning, coffee ministry, so you can come join us for that around 5 o'clock or come a little later and help us serve or just swing by and grab you a cup of coffee on the way to work. Am I missing anything as far as announcements go? Ms. Audrey? Um, the women's group has been putting together a cookbook for a while. and any, We have a lot of recipes, but anybody that hasn't put in some or would still like to put in some more, if you could get them to Laura, my mom, or Janelle this week. Um, we're trying to get everybody in that wants to. So, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Audrey. Any other announcements? Well, at the church council meeting uh, Tuesday night, some of this stuff may change. If we have the church council, we could start back Sunday school as early as next Sunday, but the council will make that decision and on some other stuff, <clears throat> on some other things. So uh, if they do, then we will send out emails and text messages updated. But we talked about it to trustees, but it's up to the council uh, to make it. To make any of these decisions. Okay, thank you, Ken. So just be ready, you know, for whatever uh, our schedule allows us to do. It's just a privilege just to be able to come back. I've missed worship a lot. <laughs> Good to see all of you here. We may be a little bit low in number, but that's okay. I'm glad all of you are here. Uh, before we look at our prayer list, let me say a few things. Uh, especially, you all want to thank the Ross. Uh, he's done an excellent job helping us get these videos and get them online. Uh, some of them are being put on Facebook, some are on our website, and uh, sending it to me so I can send some of the links out by text message. And thank you, Ross, for all the work there. Appreciate uh, uh, Chris. He helped put some of the music together with these videos, and searching uh, for good music. Uh, appreciate Eric, uh, Chip. Uh, Eddie uh, for preaching. Uh, Randy will start back as soon as we can with the book of Daniel. Uh, uh, probably if we, if the church council says we're going to start Wednesday night back this coming Wednesday, uh, we will have, uh, probably have, uh, Eric, we don't realize this, but uh, the same servant he's already preached on video, uh, we'll just have him come in here and preach it live. Good. And then the next uh, next uh, Wednesday, I think that'll be the 17th, will be uh, whenever the 17th is. That's Ash Wednesday, and we'll have an end service for that. And Chip will do the last service for February. 
And then that'll wrap up being the grand. You'll start back uh, uh, doing Daniel the first Wednesday in March. So let's bow. You know, Father Lord, how awesome it is to be in your house tonight. And Father, we don't want to get in a hurry, but we want to be right on time and giving you the praise that you deserve. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you have already accomplished. We thank you for the things that you're about to accomplish. And we know, God, that you're in control and that you can do all that of things. And Father, we have brought before you others that are now hurting, that are sick, that have lost loved ones. And we pray, Father, that you will continue the comfort and the guidance and the healing that you have done in the past. Continue it in their lives. Father, bless each one that's here today. I am thankful to be able to call my brothers and my sisters. I'm thankful for the love that's in our church. I'm thankful for so many things, God. And we, as the body of Christ here in Emmanuel, lift high your name and praise you. We give thanks to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died upon the cross for us, and we can be redeemed. We thank you for so much, Lord. We pray, God, in the days ahead that you will take this church and you will use us to reach out into this community and this area for your glory and your honor. Now, hear all our prayers, whether we mention them out loud or not. You know our hearts. You know our wishes. You know our desires. We cast all these things upon you, Lord. So as it says in your word, that you care for us. Now bless us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. 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 As we continue to remain seated, we will continue praising God. Let's sing, Are You Washed in the Blood?
going to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be, as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. In verse 41, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In this psalm here, Psalm 78, we gather a wealth of historical data, historical evidence, that in spite of the people's foolishness, their rebelliousness, their disloyalty, their division among themselves and their leaders, that God still loved them, and that God was still at work, and God still patiently watched over them. Verse 8 really jumped out at me to what I was studying. And it says there that he called them a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation uh, that set not their hearts aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Wow. The Lord had it written down and he called you like he saw it. I wonder sometimes aren't we a stubborn generation, uh, a rebellious generation, a people, not necessarily us individually, but us as a group even, that uh, don't listen to God at times. He went on there in verse 41, and I, this is the verse that I really want to uh, deal with today. And he said that, uh, yea, they turned their back and tempted God, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Well, this answers the question, can we limit God? Can we tie the hands of God? You know, one day Jesus went into a town, they wouldn't listen to him, they wouldn't accept him, and he basically he dusted the feet, uh, the, dust off the dust from his feet and left. And he said he could do no great work there because of their unbelief and because of their actions. And sometimes we limit God. We limit Him individually. We limit Him as a church, as a group. And we definitely limit Him as a nation. It's tough when God is wanting to bless us. He's ready to bless us. He's ready to watch over us. He's ready to fight for us. And yet we limit that. Isn't that sad? And because we live with him, he chooses not to bless us. Now, so I have heard it said many times that you can refer to God kind of like you would somebody that is a gentleman. That they're not going to force the issue, they're going to be uh, respectful, they're going to let us do what we want to do. He basically isn't going to argue with us and fight with us. If we don't want to be blessed, he'll take his blessing somewhere else. If we don't want him to work a mighty work, he'll go somewhere else and do it. He's allowing us, even as his people, the freedom to make choices. We do not become robots when we become Christians. We become part of the family of God. 
And as part of the family of God, we have certain benefits, certain rights you might call them, certain blessings. But God's still not going to make us do things. When our kids were small, kind of like Ken and Aubrey's kids, they're small. Yes, they had to guide them, direct them, <coughs> and make them do certain things. But as they get older, we come to a point where we say, they're adults now. And I can't tell them what to do anymore because they'll bow up. Or they'll do what they want to do. Have you ever done that yourself? Somebody shake their head yes if you've been like that. You know. As we become teenagers and get a little bit older, it just seems like those teenage years, mom and dad are just as dumb as dirt. <clears throat> then when we start getting into our 20s, we begin to grow up and we begin to realize, hey, mom and dad are a little bit smarter than I thought they were. Then we hit our 30s, they're pretty doggone smart. By the time we hit our 50s and 60s, some of us say, I wish I could talk to mom and dad again. Right. Get their advice on the money. God's kind of like that. When we become new Christians, He's trying to lead us by the Holy Spirit. He's trying to teach us through His Word. He's trying to encourage us to go to church. But as we get older, the Holy Spirit isn't as strong at times unless we are following Him. He says in the Old Testament, my spirit will not always strive with me. And that comes in two forms. One is he's trying to reach out to the lost and trying to get them to come to know him. He sends his Holy Spirit out. But if we keep saying no, 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 that spirit is not as strong there. and We turn from it. And then if we do accept Christ and he's trying to lead us, sometimes we keep saying no, no, no. And his spirit is not as strong. He says, okay, you're going to have to learn some tough lessons. Do it your way and see where it gets you. And you know, a few days trip out of Egypt to the promised land turned into over 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness. Do you ever wonder why you might wander in the wilderness of life? and don't seem to have answers, and don't seem to have directions, maybe it's because you're a little bit stubborn, a little bit rebellious, maybe it's because you're limiting the Holy One. Could be. Now who, got three thoughts I want to share with you real quick. First thought is this, who is it that's really limiting the power and work of God? In the Old Testament here, it was Israel. In the New Testament, it's the church. God is not using these scriptures to fuss at the law. These scriptures are for his people. And he's basically saying, my people, they're not listening. Matter of fact, one of the most famous verses in the Old Testament that most of us are familiar with is 2 Chronicles 7, 14. For it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. He said, if, if, if my people will do these things and turn from those wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. And look at the benefits. He's going to heal their land. He's going to take care of their needs. He's going to bless them. But we're a stubborn group of people. He starts out verse 1 here in chapter 78. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. God is basically saying, listen up. Listen up. When my kids was little, I, my son especially, 
He didn't want to listen. And I'd be sitting there just trying to talk to him, trying to teach him a few things. And every now and then, I would literally, he was a kid, and I knew he wasn't listening to what I was saying. And I'd literally just reach out gently, wanting to smack him a time or two, but I didn't. Gently, I would put a hand on each side of his face and hold it and have him look me straight in the eye and say, are you listening? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because if you don't listen, there's going to be consequences. Mm -hmm. God is saying, listen up. Incline your ear. Now, I'm a little harder of hearing in my left ear than I am in my right ear. And if you and I are in a conversation and you are not talking very loud, you may catch it now that I'm telling you about it. Catch me turning my head just a little bit to the left so my right ear is listening a little bit better so I can hear you. Incline your ear means listen up, folks. Lean over if you have to. Get to where you can hear what I'm saying. God wants us to hear him. He wants us to know what he has to say. And so who are the people? Well, for us today, it's us Christians. It's not the atheist. It's not the agnostic. It's not the infidel like Herod was. God is saying, listen, my people. And so today, he wants us to hear. Now, first thing is, Who's he talking to? Well, he's talking to us. Second thing, let's consider who's doing the talking. God is. Now, what do we know about God? Well, he's God. But what do we really know about God? Well, if you've read your Bible, you know a whole lot of things. You know he parted the sea. You know he had you know, a building ark. You know, he brought the plagues upon Egypt so his people would be let go. We know that he promised them a land where they neither planted or built the promised land. We know after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness when they finally, the older generation died out because they wouldn't listen and he raised up a younger generation all except for Joshua and Caleb they were only the two, and they were the positive ones when they went out and spied the land. They were the only older two that got to go into the promised land. And Joshua was the leader. And Caleb said, give me the mountains, Lord, I'm still strong. And he was up in age. And the rest of them were about 40 years younger because they were born in the wilderness. And they got to inherit the, the promised land. And they watched Joshua and they participated in walking around and saw the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. All through the Bible are mighty acts that God has done. And you get into the New Testament and you see Jesus healing the blind, healing the lame, raising the dead. Who's talking? God that created the heavens and the earth. God that can heal us and bless us and protect us. That's who's speaking. And that's who we ought to listen to. Think about it. Now, I'm going to get on a very, very touchy subject right now. And some of you may bow up with it. And that'll be all right. You ever seen a cat bow up when a dog comes around? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I may hear about this and I may get y'all bowing up on it. But let me tell you, this COVID stuff, I got a text this morning that says, I don't think I'm coming to church. Now, it's not one of our regular members. This is somebody new I've been invited. They said, don't think I'm going to come to church today. I'm afraid I catch COVID in the church. And I thought to myself, this person works in a restaurant, is a server, around hundreds of people every day. This person goes to Walmart all the time. This person 
goes to the grocery store all the time. This person hasn't slowed down, but they had the gall to text me and say, I'm not coming to church because I might catch COVID. What have we got? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, uh, fourteen, sixteen. We got about maybe 30 people. We got some out there in the fellowship hall. Now listen to me. If you prayed and you sought God and He said, stay home, you need to stay home. But if you're just afraid to live in this world, I feel sorry for you. I'm going to live as long as God wants me to live. And I'm going to die when God wants me to die. Amen. Nothing can take me out of this world until God's ready. And nothing can keep me in this world if God's calling me home. Right. Not the best doctors, not the best of anything, not the best medicine. It's not going to keep me here when God said, all right, time to come on home. Now, do we need to be wise? Yeah, we try not to be too foolish. We do a lot of foolish things otherwise, though, don't we? Well, I will tell you, folks, we serve a mighty God. And we should not fear. I learned a lot of stuff moving over from a Baptist to a Methodist. And I learned some good stuff. I really did. And I learned that most of the circuit riding preachers came out of the Methodist denomination. Right. Mm -hmm. And did you know that they went out preaching the word by horseback and walking? Mm -hmm. And they fought off wild animals. They fought off robbers and thieves and some of the old meanest people you could <coughs> find that were starting this nation of ours. They fought the weather and the elements. Dang, I'd hated to be a preacher down here in South Georgia riding horseback and having to fight the mosquitoes every day. Nowadays, I can get my air-conditioned house. Well, it's really your air-conditioned house I'm living in. But I can get in there, and there's no mosquitoes in that house. If I had to get out here and live under a, maybe some kind of makeshift tent and go about preaching the Word, and I've been, I rode horses and I've plowed with old mules. And I know what it's like to be around them. I'm glad we have a day of tractors and conveniences. But I will tell you, what if we had to deal with stuff like they used to deal with? And yet they kept their faith. I'll tell you folks, we serve an awesome God. He's able to take care of us. I got about five, ten minutes, or I may go over 10, 20, 30 minutes. Let me get into the other part, the last part. This is going to be the good part to me. First part is, is who's he talking to? He's talking to the church. Second part is who's talking? God is talking. And we uh, worship a mighty God, and we serve a mighty God. The third part, and I didn't read all the scriptures I could have read. But he lays out a list of how we limit God. I'm going to hit these pretty fast. First one is we limit God by our disobedience. Verse 10, we didn't read. But in verse 10 says, They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law. Obedience. God wants obedience. And we limit Him through our disobedience. When we know what the Word of God says, when we know how we should live, we know what we should do, and we don't do it, that's disobedience. I was raised up. Dad said, go out there and do this or do that. I didn't do it. He whipped my tail. My mama did too. She did, she was just as bad as my dad. Matter of fact, she was worse probably. I got more whippings from my mom than I did my dad. <laughs> and I hated it because in the summertime I wore short breeches and they wanted to get one of them little liberty limbs. They would leave straps on my legs. My legs would uh, bleed. Now, I didn't consider myself 
myself abused, but I do consider this because of my upbringing, upbringing, I'm not out here rioting and burning down people's houses and building businesses. So I'm thankful for my upbringing because it taught me they were determined I was going to be a good citizen. Amen. They were determined. God's determined that if we'll be obedient, He will bless us, and if we will be disobedient to what His Word teaches, we won't be blessed. And every now and then, He'll turn that around and whip our tails. Mm -hmm. Read the Bible. Ananias and Sapphire, what they do? They sold a piece of land. It was in their control. They could do whatever they wanted to with the money. But they lied. They took what they sold and they said, well, I just got so much and I'm just going to give this. And they wanted to look good in all the eyes of the other believers. <coughs> but they lied to God and they lied to the believers. And they kept part of the money back. What does the Bible say happened to them? They died. God killed them. I believe that. Now I hope and pray that I never do anything so bad. God says, well, you could have lived another 20 years, but you did this, and I'm fed up with it. I'm taking you out of here. Now, that's a half bad, half good thing. He takes me out. I'm a born-again Christian, and I believe in the blood of church. Jesus Christ, and he saved me from the sin. He'd be nice to go to heaven. But most of us want to live as long as we can. And that would be the bad thing. And then him to consider, you're no longer any use of me for me. That'd be a very embarrassing mm -hmm. thing. Because I would be disobedient. I'm not no use. What does he say about the salt? If it's lost its savor, it's of no use. It's thrown on the ground and trotted under feet. So disobedience is one of the things that comes about that limits God. Forgetfulness, verse 11. They forgot what he had done. The wonder he had shown them. Over and over God did miracles for these people. He brought them out of Egypt. They brought water out of a rock. He fed them with manna from heaven. Even when they were rebellious and complaining and griping and grumbling, he still tried to reach them and take care of them. And they forgot how he watched over them. Forgetfulness limits God. Unbelief limits God. Verse 32. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. Wow. Did not believe. Have you seen God at work? Have you seen all that God has done? All he has created? And still do not believe? Unbelief limits God. Worldliness. Verse 33. Therefore, the, therefore their days did... Let me back up. Verse 33 says, Therefore their days did he consume in vanity. Solomon, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Do we live with vanity in our lives? Well, I don't have to fix my hair every morning. Now, when I had hair, I'd take time to wash it, shampoo it, blow dry it. I want to look good for the girls. I'm just thankful that I grew up in a time where men did not wear makeup. We left that up to the women. And I offer women wearing makeup. I'm not one of these that don't think women should wear makeup. I'm ready. I'm, I like women that wear makeup. Any old barn looks good with a coat of paint on it, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just keep digging deeper. Preach it. 
<laughs> you, you're showing who they are. Where are they? Insincerity, verses 36 and 37. Are we insincere? But then they would flatter him with their mouths, lying to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Jesus said there in Matthew chapter 15, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by man. Insincerity. Ingratitude limits God. Verse 54 says, Thus he brought them to the border of his holy land. And verse 56 says, But they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep his statutes. He brought them, he showed them the promised land and the blessings. And they did appreciate it. And they walked away. One last one. We limit God with idolatry. Verse 58 says, They angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with their idols. And what God is saying here is, is it the building that's more important than God? Is it the candles, the Bible, the communion table? Is it the cross on the wall behind me? Is it the new floors? Are these our idols? Are we more worried about the building than we are people? I have actually pastored churches that didn't want kids coming if their parents didn't come because they considered them too rowdy and they might mess up the floors or the building. They are churches like that. And so they have built a nice building and they worship the building. Instead of saying, God, we dedicate this building. Now fill it up with anybody that wants to come. Right. Amen. Anybody. Doesn't matter what, what age. <laughs> Doesn't matter what race. Doesn't matter whether they're poor or rich. Idolatry. What do we hold up before God? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it our homes? Is it our cars? Is it our clothes? Listen, folks. If God has blessed you, He has blessed you. Be thankful. But use whatever you have for His glory. Listen, I'm going to close. Limiting the holy. I pray to God that a man never limits God. I pray we never limit I pray we think outside the box. I pray that we get on our knees and say, God, show us what to do, how to do it, who to reach out to. Some people say, well, look around. Most of us are older. That means you've got good outside. We are older. We don't have a lot of young people here, only a few kids. You know what the, most of us would say? The preacher, we got to get the kids. we got to get the kids in church. They're the future. And I always turn around and say, no, we need to get whoever God sends us in the church. If he wants us to have kids, he'll send the kids. If he wants us to have young parents, we'll have young parents. If he wants us to have more senior adults, we'll have more senior adults. Let's not focus on one group and forget about the rest. Amen. But let's take everyone, whoever God sends us, let's reach out to anybody and everybody that they might come to know Jesus. Amen. As Paula and Chris come to lead us in our song, let me say this. The most important thing that ever happened in my life has been Jesus Christ becoming our Lord and Savior. Amen. Because he became my Lord and Savior, I have plans for heaven and I have plans for this hell. It's not anything I've done. It's because he offered me a gift. 
an Irish town in its city. And it's a gift of salvation that Jesus provided by his death on the cross. And I want everyone that I can to receive this same gift. And everyone can. Whosoever mm -hmm. will believe in their heart <coughs> and confess with their mouth can't be saved. So folks, I dare say most everybody here knows the Lord. And I want you to know this message is not for the lost, but it's for us, the people of God. And I want you to know in my heart, I pray that I don't live it God wants it. I pray that I deal with all these things. My belief will be strong. My obedience will be strong. My understanding will be strong. My commitment to love and work and honor will be strong. So that I don't limit God. Because he's got us here for a purpose. And our time is not long on this earth. Let's make sure we're walking with him in faith and in commitment. And say, Lord, please use me for your glory and honor. If there's things you want to pray about, you come. If there's a new commitment you need to make, come and pray. If there's a person that this message has touched and put on your heart that you need to pray for, that you'd like to see them come to church, or you'd like to witness to them. Come and pray about it. Show God that you're serious. But if there's other commitments that you feel the Lord is leading you to make, you come. This is your time right now. The invitation time is your time. And so I invite you, don't live in God. Because if you live in it, you can do a great work and you lose out on a lot of blessings. Let's stand and we sing our invitation here. Let's be dismissed in prayer. Father Lord, we honor you. We thank you for this wonderful day. Bless your people as we leave this place and may we be your light in this world. God, just take care of us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.